my shame, but baby, I can't forget you, you a special kind of lady, cause when I'm with you, girl, you know that you amaze me, my shame, but it saves me, my shame, but a baby, ooh, we got no issues, you my shame, but a baby, I had to get you, you a special kind of lady, and when I'm with you, girl, when I'm with you, I can't forget you, I can't forget you, oh, you She was like, hey, she was like, she was like, hey, boy, what it do? I think I got you. Hey, everybody, it is me, Jamie Radius Moorhead, your favorite Christian life coach. And today we are here for another Jay's Morning Coffee. And we are doing testimony edition. So today I have Dr. Elijah Glenn and as known as Hemble Dad, and we are going to be interviewing him. Of course, you guys know I don't do the intros, they introduce themselves. So um, how are you doing today, Mr. Glenn? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I am so glad to have you because I That's am. Good. Yes. So I'm going to let you introduce, your, introduce yourself to the people. Okay. So uh, the introduction that I would give myself is that uh, I'm, a, I'm a follower of Christ, number one. Uh, number two, I'm a husband. Number three, I'm a father. Uh, and number four, I'm a lifelong learner. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if you wanted to uh, kind of put me in a, a combination of things, I'm a creative. Um, I'm the guy that's going to challenge you to be better. And you may not like how it comes out. But at the end of the, the day, the goal is for me to, uh, you know, push you to be better and to also think about the things that you think about. So that's that's a look. great friend to have, to be honest. I don't think anybody always likes to have that friend, you know, but you are a great friend to have if you're looking to be better. Um, so I met you by happenstance yeah. and, um, one humble dad is a, a great name, uh, to me because the hardest thing to do is to humble thyself because that's what the Bible says. Right. And so in getting to know you, um, I know that you're a believer and I wanted to get your testimony. And so I don't know how far back you want to go or where you want to start, but I'm going to let the Holy Spirit do what he does through you. So okay. you want me to say you don't know how far back you want, you want me to <laughs> No. <laughs> but an interviewer, you're going you gonna to let me dictate. Okay, so I would say, um, you know, born in Dallas uh, in the South, right, it's the Bible Belt, right? So it's a church on every corner. And in between, mm -hmm. right? So, um, I was raised in the church. Um, I grew, I went to church all the time. I was even in a, a gospel group as a kid. Uh, and so we would travel different you places. You sing? I sing a little bit. What? Okay. No, I'm not as good as most, but I, I can hold a tune. Uh, if I know the song, I'm, I'm solid. Yeah. Okay. Um, if I don't, I can't find the key. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so that was that was really cool growing up. So what that did for me, not necessarily spiritually, but uh, I guess so, it helped me remember some songs right there. I can mm -hmm. always call back or remember. Uh, and so during that time, I remember you know getting cassette tapes. One of those cassette tapes uh, was Kurt Franklin. Uh, one of those cassette tapes was Marvin Sapp, John P. Key, and so those were things that were kind of embedded in me. So I wasn't listening to a lot of secular music. Uh, I was listening to a lot of gospel music, right? Not necessarily living it, but it definitely, I believe, I would say it kept me out of uh, as much trouble as I probably could have got in being okay. raised by a single parent. So, um, so, so you you said, okay, you said something being raised by a single parent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so did you ever know your father? Yes, I know uh, who he is. Uh, I would spend some summers with him to some degree. Uh, he lived always at least 30 minutes away uh but as far as relationship building uh that that was not a thing and so okay. right even right now he probably stays 15 20 minutes away from me now and i probably talked to him he called me the other day what like three days ago probably called me and i okay. hadn't talked to him before that in like a year oh wow really yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah. so it's a big deal for me to be a dad you know? yeah so how many kids do you have? I have four. You have four. They range, yeah, they range from uh, 14 to five. So it's 14. Gianna is 14. Joshua is 12. 
Ethan is 10 and Jordana is five going on whatever age is grown. <laughs> <laughs> she got to keep up. You know, like there's a bunch of older kids in the house. She's got to yeah. keep up. <laughs> she's, 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 she's super smart. All of them are very smart. Very smart and intellectuals, um, you know, uh, believe in God and they have to explain why. And they have to explain why. That, that I've never heard anybody say that before. Um, you know, they say believe in God, but they never say, and they have to be able to explain why. Okay, so yeah. you, you kept um, worship music in your heart, right? But you wouldn't say you were living it. No, high school, you know, I was about hooping. You know what I'm saying? I was trying to play basketball. Uh, what was that ninth grade, tenth grade year? You know, I, w- I was going to church and I enjoyed the church that I was going to because my pastor, uh, he taught a really good message. And so I could follow it uh, at the time. But I don't remember him talking about building a relationship with Christ. Mm. And so and it wasn't being lived in my house either. Right. Gotcha. No disrespect to my mom, but, you know, she would let you know that as well, that she wasn't. Lived. She would talk about it, you know, that we need to be going to church and there will be Bible studies to attend. But as a, as a, you know, the lifestyle, I couldn't say that I, I, I saw it mimic to be able to say, oh, okay, yeah, let me rock with that. So then I get to college, shout okay, out to okay. Austin, right? In Nacogdoches, Texas, East Texas, that is. Uh, I get there and I get a rude awakening from some dudes that actually rock the Bible. Oh, you know wait, saying? you got some Bible gangsters that came through and just playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, God, I will say he was a gangster at all, right? Right. <laughs> you know, and I remember distinctly this one particular moment. We were in the UC where people gather, you know, for a congregation or whatever, and there was a piano there, and he's playing, and he's talking about the Bible, and I was like, I know the Bible. I hadn't read that bad. Book. Oh. But I so- said it because I was my, in my arrogance because I yeah. had been in church. But I had not read the Bible. He he schooled me on a lot of things, right? And so he educated me. But I wasn't living it. But I, uh, you know, uh, but I always had it. If I went back and read some of my journals, yeah. I was talking to God in my journals, even though I wasn't living it. I was hoping that I could, wow. but I wasn't. Right? And then my mom would tell me to go to church all the time. That was my freshman year, and I was going to church, you know, that first semester. And then I was like, man, these parties are way much better. Then going to church, you know, mm. up and go to church and then be not doing what the pastor says or even trying to say. So not until, um, man, what year was that? I want to say 2005. Okay. I was a, I was a manager at, uh, at a telemarketing company. And this young lady that was working for me, shout out to Alicia Burley. Uh, she, she would come, she would say, Lodge. My name is Elijah, right? <laughs> she would never call me Elijah. She like, Lodge, you should come visit us at church. I'm like, man, no church, good churches around here. I've been to all of them. And she would ask me, I don't know, three, four months straight. You know, she would ask me. Uh, I can't say every day, but she asked me re- regularly enough that I would say, let me go ahead and go t- and visit their church. And so, Just one time so she could be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> So shout out to Nacogdoches Bible Fellowship. If you know Tony Evans, Tony yes. Evans is Bible Fellowship. But one of the um, siblings, I guess, if you will, of mm-hmm. uh, Tony Evans Church is, uh, is Nacogdoches Bible Fellowship. His, oh. uh, his late wife, brother, was a part of Nacogdoches Bible Fellowship. Uh, and so they, they, they built that church. Well, you know, made the name down there. And so that's where I visited and I was in utter amazement by how the pastor delivered the word and it, it caused me to be convicted. Oh, wow. And okay. So, so was it, was it, was it, day, it wasn't that particular day, but I was, I started going on more regular basis. Okay. So that conviction brought upon you being hungry, like, like, okay, I want to see what they're really talking about. Yeah. When did you say, okay, I'm a, I'm a really build this relationship. I want to say that happened uh, summer of, it might've been summer of 2006 because 
I came because I lived in India for about six months. That was in 2005. Come back, you know, uh, I was I was dating my late wife and uh, I just woke up. I said, man, we can't do what we was doing before. You know? Oh, it started bothering you. Yeah, I just woke up. She wasn't even there around. I just woke up one morning. I it would have to be 2006. Something OK, like 2005, 2006. It was somewhere in there, maybe early. I don't know. It was something like that. Right. And um, it just hit me. So I, I just don't want to do what I used to do anymore. Mm. I, I, it was that, uh, I, I want to say it was a Saturday night um sunday morning it was a it was when i woke up so it probably was a sunday morning or something like that i had just came from the club uh gotcha. and woke up and it was just it's just what it was like it wasn't nobody teaching the word or anything it was just like i'm done so that led me to start going back to church on a regular basis um start you know studying my word a little bit and then i got connected in the church and uh it was these guys remember i told you i was doing music when i was younger Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that we would do in my in my family is that for Christmas we would we would rewrite uh, secular songs into Christmas and church songs. Oh, okay, okay. So, so I've been writing since I was probably twelve. So, but you never went that route with like business mm -hmm. or yeah, business? like. Yeah, or just even making it something that you did. Yeah, it wasn't something that I did. No, it was just a a, a creative creative outlet to 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 write. You know, uh, right? Because because how I grew up, it wasn't hard, but I I, I grew up poor. You know? mm. and it wasn't like poverty. It, it was we was in poverty, but if people, if you ask people that I that I was around, they would tell you that I didn't act like I was poor. Right. So you had a poor mindset. Oh, okay. Explain. Can you elaborate on that? Like the, the poor mindset. Um, mm -hmm. What did that look like for you? Okay. Poor mindset to me is that everybody else is the reason why you're not getting where you need to get to. Oh. Right. And so for me, I, I've since I was probably 13, 14, I always wanted to be my own businessman. I always wanted to own a business. Okay. Right? I don't know where that came from, but it's what it was. And so uh, before that, I wanted to be a lawyer. Be, but I had a hard time reading. I had a reading. Uh, I read a ninth grade year. I read on a, a sixth grade level. Oh, wow. Right? And so <laughs> I felt like that wasn't going to be a thing for me. So I transitioned to trying to be a business owner. And so I went to college to, to in, in, uh, major in general business, which is the worst degree ever to get. Right. Uh, and then I, I, I was in hospitality, you know, mm -hmm. uh, worked for a couple of places in hospitality. So because the goal was to own my own hotel franchise. Nice. So I always had the, the mindset to, to run a business. Right. And so then as you transition to um, you know, getting into the to the church, I I, I found myself um, wrestling with the idea is is God real? And mm. even though I feel like I need to change my life. And so I said, and then I start thinking, well, did I just do this because I was born in it? And then I started researching different religions. How long did you research different religions for? Because I actually, I've, I did the same thing. My I grew up in a house where my dad was Muslim mm -hmm. and my mom was actually, she didn't believe. Like she, when they met, she was not a believer. Um, she didn't want to hear anything about God. She actually had felt God, you know, put her in some not good situations that she just did not understand how people could serve somebody like, like God. Right. Yeah. And so, um, she got saved, which then changed the dynamic in the house. Mm, yeah. Um, because sure. you know, my dad wasn't used to who is this woman, uh, but prior to that, so my dad would, you know, put stuff in front of me, like different religions, different things. And he would say, you need to read that. And, um, because the one thing they did agree on was to give the information to study other religions so that this child can make their own decision on what what she wants to to do so and then like mm -hmm. so so i appreciate that you know um but but it, i so so when you when you did do the studies like how 
how long did it take you to kind of go through and be like, okay, I. Mm, that's a that's an interesting. That's a solid question. Uh, I don't know. I, I I could say a year, and I okay. I wouldn't know if I'm right or not. I know that what I did was um, try to figure out the the logic behind why why would Christianity make sense? Mm, ooh. To the other the other religions. Uh, and then, like I said, I lived in India uh, for six months. And so they have a different view of religion. Mm -hmm. Right. And so. Um, so when I seen. So I think God showed me a different couple of things. Uh, you know, one, if I go back, like I had transferred and I was 19, I transferred to Texas Tech and um, I had a car wreck mm -hmm. and my car flipped three times. And I survived that. So that he 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 brought that back to my memory. He brought back that, uh, you know, being able to to go to India was was a God thing because if 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 it had been any other time, I probably wouldn't have been able to go. Right. It's based on like um, the situation was I was a manager on a team, and I had got transferred to a new team within the, the, the company mm -hmm. and look that I know that they was preparing to have a company in India and, and, to, and they needed some people to go over there and build. Well, if I wouldn't have went, so when I went to, uh, let me finish your thought. So if I didn't go to the new um, campaign, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't have that opportunity. Meaning that when I got over there, I was working with this guy named Steven. Shout out to Steven. They called Steven back. Steven was at the time like 22, 23 year old. Okay. Uh, white dude, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not that it matters, but it don't matter, right? But, you know, uh, he was a white dude and I hadn't known him other than maybe like two months. Okay. Just working with him. So they call him to the back and they he comes out, he said, what'd you think about going to India? I said, what you talking about? I said, yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was <laughs> single. I, I mean, I, yeah, I was in between because I had just broke up with my, with, with Jen at the time. So okay. I, I was I was single. To, to that point, right? And uh, he said, because they asked me if, if I could go with somebody, who would I want to go with? And I said, you. Oh. Said, what? <laughs> so, so two months prior to that, I didn't know Steve. Right. But you had made such an impression on him within that two months that he was like, no, I'm going to take him. Mm -hmm. I was like 25. Wow. What a uh, blessing. Exactly. Like that. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, so that was another God moment, right? Uh, coming back, you know, uh, I'm over there and I am in turmoil as far as trying to know if I'm a Christian or if I, like I was really in a, I think he sent me over there to get a clear mind. Mm. Like, I was, like I was not living right when I was in America. Right. And like so you my, were was vanity. like my goal was to be a millionaire regardless. I was not thinking about being no teacher. My, remember, I said I wanted to be a business owner because I just yeah. wanted money. But when I went over there, it humbled me. You know, what humbled like, you about going over there? Like, what did you see I mean, over there? Knocking that... on my, my win, knocking on the window with nickels because they, they can't afford anything. Uh, wow. living, living in the area where it's a we bunch of wealth, but in the same complex, there's people living in tents. Right, people. There's floods that happen, and people die because it's a flood. Because it's it's a monsoon season where it's raining too much straight, and people don't don't know they got to pick up their stuff and, and leave. You know, people coming into uh, the call center, uh, you know, they're working m the midnight shift mm -hmm. because they need to provide for their family. Some of these kids uh, and people were going to college and then coming to work, you know, at midnight. Right, and so seeing the poverty allowed me to see how bad how good I had it right visual right mm -hmm. and not to mention I did really well over there uh for the company right and gotcha. and that was even with how okay. I spoke because they didn't understand my I had a list and I still have it a little bit now but I had it really bad before okay they, they couldn't understand my dialect Right. But they could understand everybody else's. So then even that was another God moment because I was able to communicate uh, with them well enough for it to teach them how to sell over the phone. Right. Okay. So uh, uh, I, I took that company from 20 agents by the time I left in six months 
it was at about 100 to 120 agents. Wow. Mm-hmm. And, and we was at we was at uh, 115. Let me give an average for the pat for the four the last four months I was there, we were at 115 percent of gold, which brought them a lot of money. A uh, lot of money. Mm-hmm. So he so it, it seems like um, your coworker made the right choice. I would say so. <laughs> I would say so. But it was a God thing because it because <laughs> even though I was doing well in America as a as a as a team lead, if you will. Yeah, they were not going to ask me personally to go because I've never been the yes guy. Yeah. Oh, you've never been the yes guy. Yeah, I've never been the yes guy. I've been the controversial individual, mainly wherever I've been. So you okay? All right, I, I you don't have to explain that. Um, so that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> okay. On purpose, it's just that I'm not going to just do something because you told me to. Ex- you know Listen. what I'm saying? I understand. It, it to, like I understand that you're my boss, but if you're asking me to go against my morality and my integrity, that ain't gonna happen. Ooh, that is, and you've been doing been like that your whole life. Mm, uh, uh, no. or just any, when you got uh, like I a certain say, age. I would, that, uh, I would say a certain age. I would say uh, probably becoming uh, a little higher up, at maybe like twenty. Yeah, five ish maybe. But that's still young. I mean, that's great because it's still young to be able to say no. I'm not doing that. You're gonna have to explain yeah. that to me. Yeah. You so know, my homeboys were smoking. You know, saying so sometimes I would, sometimes I wouldn't. It would just be a matter if I felt like it, it wasn't like I was typically uh, peer pressured into it. Right. You know? uh, because I had learned that lesson when I told you I went to uh, to Texas Tech because because mm-hmm. I was home with my friend. Well. Because I learned my, I learned that I can't just trust everybody. And me trusting somebody that I shouldn't have been trusting almost got me killed. Oh, okay. So you had a couple of yeah, near death experience. Flipped, my car flipped three times. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so that's how the, the accident. I yeah, I fell asleep at the wheel when I was nineteen, going to Texas Tech, and I, sw- I almost hit the um, the end rail, and I swerved, and I hit the ditch, and my car just started flipping. Okay, and then God, God definitely covered you. God covered me on that for sure, right? I, I absolutely. I mean, I only got a scratch. And yeah. you just walked away like nothing happened. Yeah, and the people that came across to help me, they was like, "We thought you were dead," but I walked out of the car. Well, out of the window, I had to climb through the window. But you, know, but you made it out like that's it. wow. Okay, so India, you build help build the company greatly you come back yeah were you were you kind of at peace in india a little bit though like did you yeah i was at peace uh and then also while i was over there that's when he showed me that even though i had broke up with jen that she was my wife wow that happened that was interesting mm-hmm. right and so uh-huh. so then come back right and i am uh ex- you know i am uh what's the word i'm looking for I am in a, uh, I'm excited because I have some money in my pocket. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I've seen that God wants me where he wants me to be. Right. And then the journey begins um, with me trying to get my life right. As far as like, I, you know, like I told you, I hadn't even committed to him yet. It That's what, that's, it had to be 2006. 2000 yeah. what? It had to be 2006. Okay. That, it had to be like in that spring maybe or something. Okay. Uh, the summer because uh, I proposed to Jen like my birthday in 2006. So it had to happen a little bit somewhere. Around the time. How did 2007. How, how did God show you that that was your wife? Um, I was in a it was in a dream. We had broke up. We had uh, and uh, it was like we had had a conversation. We was friends. Yeah, we had had a conversation, and I was like, yeah, this just stop. this not gonna be it, right? Mm-hmm. And um, three days later, I'm, I'm 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 asleep and I'm in the in the dream. Her 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 uh, presence was in the dream, right? And it was somewhat of like a uh, us hanging out or something like that. And um, and God showing me that I needed to go ahead and be more committed to her. Wow. At the time. And so I called her and she said, you know, uh, if you didn't call me, I had already told God to make sure that you don't, you're not in my life anymore. 
because I couldn't handle just being your friend. Yeah. Yeah. And she, the, the honesty, right? Uh -huh. and wow. So, and so, the, and so uh, that, that began the, the spiritual journey. And uh, when I got connected, so when we got married, before we got married, I had connected with uh, this group called Kingdom Minded Records. Okay. Because I needed new friends <laughs> because I was hanging out with my five <laughs> brothers all the time. Right. And, and uh, not doing, doing doing what I wasn't supposed to be doing. And so I knew that I needed to change my environment. Mm. So I got with these guys that were doing music. Uh, they were doing Christian rap at the time. And like I told you, I had been writing. Nobody knew that I, I knew how to write raps, but most of it was poetry. Uh, and so- what, what did you call the the records again? Kingdom Music? Kingdom Minded Records was Okay, Kingdom, Kingdom Minded Kingdom Records, okay. Time. Uh, and so shout out to Tim and Gabe. They now millionaires. They they do uh, art of homage clothing, the worship hats and stuff like that. Okay. So they average probably a million dollars in sales a month or something like that. Oh, right? wow. So, um, so shout out to them. And that's another story that God had to deal with me on, on forgiveness and harboring my, my, my anger towards them as well. Uh, but but yeah, they 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 took me in. And I'm I was older than them, but these were some cats that was rocking with Jesus heavy. Okay. Bible study, when having conversations, I would go over. I was not, I was not able to have conversations because I I didn't know the word. Mm, so, so you just had to listen. I had to listen, and so then that that sparked me like, man, I, if I want to be a part of a conversation, I got to be reading. So I'm reading. We all going to the same church, Nakadochi Bible Fellowship. Our pastor is encouraging us to read the Bible, read the Bible, not just talking. But he was also uh, open to us coming and talking to him, right? Okay. So that even helped. Then we had OG um, uh, John Davis, we call him Papa D. You know, Daddy D is what we call him because he was a senior in the in the, in the church, and so mm -hmm. he would also encourage us to to read the Bible and uh, teaching us how to be good husbands. You know, wow. Um, so he was, he, and so a lot of dudes, a lot of couples got married at Nakadoji Bible Fellowship in a college town. During the same year that uh, I got, me and Jen got married. Okay. So okay. In, in between that 2006, seven, eight, nine, it was several of us that got, got married, right? Uh, Tim had already been married. He got married at 19 to his, his wife. Gabe had got married. You know, they Gabe and Tim were already married when I uh, was about 26 and they was like 22 at the time. Right. Wow. So they doing the music. So I come into the group. I was doing uh, Chris. I was doing T-shirts at the time. One of the shirts that I was doing was it's all about Jesus. OK. That was, in that was in 2000. But I wasn't living it. But I was doing the shirts. So I brought it back when I got into the group. Everybody knew that I did. the, the It's all about Jesus shirts. It stood for um, Jesus stood for just eliminating Satan using saints. Oh, I love that. So that was that was what, what? I said. Okay. Then, so I was the apparel guy, right? And so mine. So that's this is part of my testimony is where I am having to live out the gospel on a daily basis because I'm around dudes that's going to challenge me if I don't. Okay. And so uh, I so that's, to, it, huh? that's important. That's important to have then, right? Like to wow. Yeah. And okay. so it was it was me, Gabe. It was Edwin. A guy named Mark Miller, shout out to Mark Miller, aka Blue. Uh, there was Tavares. Uh, there was uh, Dez, who's my accountability partner uh, now. Uh, he's been my accountability partner for maybe 15 years. Wow. Uh, like that. And um, who else? It was several of us just in the church and going on campus. Uh, Chris Morrison. I mean, there was several guys, you know, uh, that we, we, we started mentoring people. So what challenged me, like I said, was them. Uh, coming in the studio and we're, we're having Bible study at times. And then our, our lyrics had to be, had to be on point, right? It had to be about the scripture. Right. So that meant I had to read the scripture. Right. As a result, me studying the scripture, then I became a, a youth pastor at the church. Okay. Because so I, um, I knew that I needed to be involved in the church and my passion was to teach. And so uh, it transitioned from doing an adult Bible study 
at the church, the transition to uh, me being over the youth, pa- uh, you being a youth pastor, because we were traveling. I, I began to be in the group, and I started writing music, mm. right? I writing raps. I get you would say, and then I was the business uh, business person, so I was the PR person, so to speak, in the business gotcha. group, right? And so uh, I would, we were always connected to the youth. So uh, one of the you may know this guy. His name is Lecrae. Yeah. Okay, so Lecrae, when he came out with Rebel, when he first came out with Rebel, we opened up for him in Woodville, Texas. Really? Yes. And then he recommended us to uh, this church in Irvine because he rocked with us like that. He, he, he recommended us a couple of different times. He recommended us to Irvine and he recommended us to uh, uh, when he was on a radio station out in New Jersey. They was interviewing him and they was like, who you listening to right now? He's like, these some boys you probably never heard of. Uh, but the name of it is called his the guy that was the charge of the group. His name was Tim Dixon. Okay. But, uh, but his his stage name was the channel. He said, I'm listening to uh, the channel. And so the people from Arizona contacted us. People from uh, New Jersey contacted us. And so we began to do, you know, uh, travel throughout the course of Texas and even some parts of the United States as a result of that. Right. And so, mind you, I'm having to live out the gospel on yes. a regular basis. When I go and I'm talking to these students, because we're coming into youth groups and we're talking to these these people, these young people about the gospel. We're doing the music, but then I was the one that was teaching the lesson at the concert. Right? Oh, so, so you kind of held the Bible study, like the you know, it sermon. It's a, you preaching. did a sermon. Yeah, I was preaching at the end. Okay, of okay. Our uh, our sets. Oh right? wow. That happened. We was I was in that group for maybe three or four years. That's the reason why I got to Dallas, is because we were trying to get to the point of doing full, full, um, you know, uh, full time ministry is what we're trying to do. Yeah. Never, yeah. So, so, uh, and, and so, mind you, we, we, I was always in in the Bible studying, and then I pastor, because I was, I, yes, I was a youth pastor, but I was also um, associate pastor or associate minister as well. So I would. Like once every other uh, Sunday, no, one sorry, once every third month, one of the Sundays, I was teaching uh, the uh, the older people, whether it's college age and up, in okay, the, in, in the country, uh, you know, in the big churches we call mm-hmm. it, right? the big church, yeah. <laughs> so I had, so I had to. You were asking me how did I keep the journey, you know, be be consistent. I had to. I, if you go. I had to. If you go back and talk to anybody that I was in college with, they would tell you that uh, that Elijah is gonna is gonna be who he is, and he's gonna be he a lawyer dude like that. Nobody, you can't go back and, and, and even uh, my wife had uh, she met somebody. They worked together after they they used to work together. Shout out to Simon. They used to work together. We saw him. Uh, matter of fact, uh, he seen my name on her page. Okay. He was like, how you know Elijah? And she was like, and she told him, right? Mm-hmm. And he even spoke how I, about how I was in, in school, right? Wow. So even though I was not living for Christ, I've always been the dude that stood on my word. Okay. So that has been just instilled in you. You like, you said what you meant and meant what you said. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't have grace and compassion when I talked to people. <laughs> Right. People may think that now, but really I do. You know what I'm saying? Like when I'm talking to people, I'm literally thinking about like I love you. And that's the reason why I'm talking to you in this manner. Before I didn't love you and I was talking to you in this manner. <laughs> I'm only laughing because I, I've had the same problem. Like I have had to learn uh how not to be that direct. Um mm-hmm. and then go back and be like, Oh, was was I too harsh or did I say that wrong could they possibly have taken that the wrong way but before because if you want me to be honest um your personality kind of reminds me of my father and he okay. was so my father so imagine your personality but not saved <laughs> yeah i get you that's uh, imagine my personality not saved that that was definitely uh like my one of my partners he would call me the exception Right, <laughs> you know, because uh, I'm not a big guy at all, but you know, and I'm quick with the words, you know. So, uh, but yeah, so I ended up 
you know, uh, being a youth pastor, and then that transitioned me to be a teacher in the, in the education system. And and I just kept that same flame, you know, talking to the students about about God when I was at, when I was in class. Uh, we was in a small town, so where where I worked at, you know, mm-hmm. I'm 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 giving them CDs because we passed out more than five thousand CDs during the time that we was together. And so I don't know how many we sold, but it probably somewhere around the same amount. But um, so I had to be when I'm giving them the gospel CDs, I'm having to live it because remember, I told you before when I was doing the it's all about Jesus shirts, I was not living it. OK, so you weren't you were you weren't living it when you were doing the shirts. Not the first time that was in college before I graduated the first time. But you were you were selling those shirts. Yes. At that time. And people were buying them. Like, I think uh, I made about fifteen hundred dollars in three months the first the first time. And then I was like, man, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. Like this don't feel right, you know. So it was bothering you. You were conf- convicted then, like oh, even yeah. yeah, you were like, okay, I'm not. Fashion. One time, I had a fashion show that I did um, at the college, you know. But people knew me. Like uh, one of my frat brothers, he called me uh, the false prophet. That hit hard. Whew. That hit hard. There was another guy. Uh, shout out to Dan- uh, let's see, that was Sheldon that said that, uh, and then a guy named Damien. Uh, what was that? That was probably my when I came back for my second degree. Damien, he saw me at the, the trash can. Uh, I was taking out the trash. He came by. He said, "You a lodger, right? Right?" Because people knew me on campus. And mm-hmm. I was like, "Yeah." And he said, "Uh, you're not living up to your name." What? <laughs> I said, "What do you mean?" <laughs> he said, well, I, I see. I see how you are here. Like, you, you do you not know what your name means and, and who that mm. was? And I was like, Wow, oh, bro, you can't, you know. But he 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 did that. That and as you can see, it may it, it, it still resonates with me now. And I yeah. got to tell him, and I got to tell him years later when I came to the faith and I was rocking with 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 Jesus and uh, ministering the gospel and a youth pastor. And he and I, he came to the church because he was also a part of. Uh, the ministry that I was telling you about with Tim and Gabe, yeah, but he had already graduated. Right? Okay, he comes back and he's at Neck Bible visiting. Uh, shout out to him, him and his wife got seven kids now. So, seven kids, seven, yeah, shout out to Damon, right? And, uh, Be fruitful and multiply, <laughs> yeah, that's what that means. So, he, um, so I told him, I said, Bro, do you remember when you told me that? Uh, and he was like, Nah, but that sounds like something I would say. <laughs> right. And I said, thank you, you know, because that really has stuck with me to uh live out what my name is about, right? In my middle right. name, Manuel. Right? Oh wow, you definitely were not living up to your names at all. Correct. Right. Wow. And so so um so yeah, so that allowed me to all of those things. Help me be like, you know, I got to make sure that I'm consistent on a regular basis, going to the Bible studies, being in the in the rap group for sure, mm-hmm. kind of, you know, kind of cement me in, in my faith and then having kids. Well, then for then getting married. Right. And then be like, OK, how do I supposed to be a husband? So I'm having to study the word. I'm going to uh, Bible studies. I'm, I'm going to marry. I, I surrounded we surrounded ourselves with uh, godly. Married, married, married couples. couples, married couples. Uh, then we, I would have, we would have men's groups to say, okay, uh, I don't know if you've seen the book called Fireproof. With um, that is a good movie and a book. We like book. yes, we went, we went through that book and we had to execute what was in the book with our wives at the time. I bet right? you that was a beautiful experience. How was that for you? Yeah, it was a good experience. I mean, uh, I think I would say that I became a better husband because of it. You know. Uh, not saying that I was the, I was great at the time, but I was progressing to be that. Uh, and so that helped me. Right. And so then becoming a father, seeing how God sees me by having my, my kids. Right. Mm -hmm. And then also being able to forgive my dad, my father, I still hurt behind it, but I'm, I'm forgiving him. Uh, through that process, but I was angry in the beginning because I was like, when I held Gianna for the first time, I was like, how could you leave this? Right. So, okay, I, because this is good because there's so many fatherless 
children, like especially boys. Yeah. How did you process the that that those emotions, like the hurt, the anger? How did you get to the point where you were able to truly forgive him and say, okay, I'm not I'm not angry anymore? You know what I'm saying? I had to read the book called The Bait of Satan by John Bevere. Say it one more time. So that the bait, uh-huh. B-A-I-T, of uh-huh. Satan okay. by John Bevere. Okay. And it talks about how um, the devil uses uh, resentment and unforgiveness mm-hmm. to hinder you from uh, blessings and just receiving uh, who God is. Because we, we serve a, a forgiving God. We and do. If I'm not willing to forgive somebody that's in front of me. How do I accept forgiveness from the from who I can't see? Right. Right. And so that was heavy on me. And so that transitioned me to get kind of kind of navigate over that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just if he calls, I try I just be kind of cordial, but it's not an emphasis on trying to get to know who he is. Uh so but but because of that 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 inspired me to want to be a dope dad right so so it pushed you in the the right direction rather yeah. than repeating a cycle cuz i mean you could have done you know exactly what what he did right which was not be active and so um i want to make sure i Okay, so we've been on podcasts. Um, I've been on a couple podcasts with you on yours, and yeah. you said something that I think maybe in this testimony you could kind of touch on for people to completely understand. You said yeah. that a woman cannot raise a man, which I I agree with you. But can you elaborate that so that there's like a a better understanding or biblical context to what you're saying like what what is it what do you feel that you were lacking as well um for your father not being uh involved or even being able to to have a relationship with him so that's two questions so the first um uh what i was lacking was understanding what a leader looks like Mm. i was lacking uh drive and direction and stability. Uh, I was I was lacking confidence. I mean, if you if you gotcha. if you talk to my sons right now, <laughs> my sons think they can do anything. Right. Like they they really don't like especially well both of them. <laughs> I was gonna say one <laughs> or the other, but you know, like for example, uh, Joshua, I will I will say, hey, hey bro. Uh, I give it, it, this was I said you, you know that I'm more handsome than you, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, Dad. <laughs> and Josh is very humble. Really? He's a, he's a he's humble, but he's a he's a he's a beast. Okay, so he doesn't brag brag mm-hmm. and, unless you say something. Oh yeah, then he has to let yeah, you know he, the he truth. Has, he has subtleties, right? Right. But, and so, uh, if I say, "Well, can you, can you, can you hoop?" Well, not now, but you know, basically, if he practiced, he could. He's he's a natural athlete, and he's probably a genius. Okay. Okay. Okay, I got so, you. And so, and he rock with the Bible. Right. Right. So, and he's a handsome guy. Right, so he's like the complete package, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. and he doesn't carry himself in the arrogance of that. What that could be, because you could get prideful, like when right. you're right. Was, but but that's an insecurity. Pride so, is an insecurity, and so my sons have they they struggle in areas, but confidence is not one of them. So that's the thing that I was missing, Ethan. Ethan, you can't tell him, like, you can't tell him nothing. He, he got, mis- he, uh, he's at the new school or whatever. He, he's president of his class. They voted him to be president of the class. They nominated him and then voted for him. And, and so now that you've explained that mm-hmm. to, like, to this right here, 
I, I completely understand. I, I, I like, especially in this, conf, in this confidence arena right here, yeah. that, that I completely understand. They're composed. Yeah. To, 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 for the most part. Yeah. Uh, Ethan has some anger issues, but that's, that's since his mom has passed, he has those, anger. he had a little bit before, but not as much as he has now, but he, he is also being able to reserve it for a little bit, you know, uh, and Josh, he's just a, a laid back dude. He's he's a reserved dude. He's it, you're not gonna really get him off his square, right? But okay. Because I've been in his life, he sees how I operate, and so, so he's, he's watching me. Yeah, he's he tell me he's studying me. Like I have a conversation with him, and he, he <laughs> I, I asked him recently. I said, like, dude, like, what would show you that I love you? He said, just spend time with me. You know. Oh wow. Just, I just if you could just throughout the course of the week, even if it's just five minutes, but we just talking about life. That's so interesting. I I asked my son um, that type of question, even like when he was younger. I said, "Is there something I'm doing as a mom um, that is either hurting you, affecting you wrong, or like how can I show you, you know, better that I love you? Like what am I not doing?" And that and that was actually a hard uh, question to ask him. Like, I think he, maybe he was like seven, eight. Cause I was like, oh my God, I don't even want to know the answer. Um, but he, but, but I asked him that seven. And then I asked him again later on, like when I found myself working too much, is, am I, is, am I not, am I, am I neglecting you? Like, you know, do you feel neglected? And he was like, yes, I think you work entirely too much and you don't show up to any of my stuff. And I said, oh, yeah. you know, um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> my oldest daughter told me that when she was like seven or eight. And I didn't ask the question. She was like, because I was working, um, I was working two jobs at the time. Uh, I was, you know, I was teaching my full time job and I was teaching at the college. Okay. So, uh, and I would see them mainly on like Friday nights and some okay. Saturdays, you know. And she's like, Dad, you, you don't be here. Like you work too much. Mm. And so I've always tried to make it to where. I spend time with them and it's and, and I feel like I don't spend enough time with them. And Jen and Kendra are like, well, Jen was like, you do, and Kendra was like, you do. You know what I'm saying? So I've always had my mind set around that I don't spend right. enough time because I know that I didn't get it. Yeah. So you feel like you're overcompensating or trying to? Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm hard on myself. You okay. Know, you know, so and, and I understand the statistics that I told you about. Mm-hmm. And and then and I interviewed a hundred dads, right? But before that, I would ask dudes that had dads in their life, and I'd be like, Man, what is it? Why do you love your dad so much? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they'd be right. like, he was there. Okay. They don't tell me about no gift. They just say that he he was there. Sometimes that they did stuff together. Right. I mean, even if you were to ask me, like, why do I love my dad? Because he was there. Like, you, he, and, and even now when I have big wins because he's passed away and I don't mm -hmm. have him to call to gas me up like that, that's like, even as an adult, I'm like, dang, like, I just want to, you know, have that one moment where you're like, I told you I could do it, you know, like, <laughs> no, I yeah. knew you could do it, but because yeah. um, he was there. So I do, I do understand. You sit different. When you when your dad behind you, it's like God being behind you. You sit different, you it's talk true. different, you know. Uh like when I when I'm speaking, I'm speaking from the authority of the Bible. Right. And so that hit different. Right. Because like what do you, you, you now you're gonna try to focus on how I said it? True. <laughs> right. Right. Because that's the conversation I had with, you know, that's what I'm telling you about. Like some people don't want me on their panels because I'm a I'm, I'm, you're going to have to go against the word when you're talking to me. Right. And that we don't want to do that though. Like, that, I mean, nobody should want to do that. I mean, they do, but they don't, they shouldn't want to do yeah, that. Yeah. But it's challenging to go against the standard. Mm -hmm. Now, if I miss it, like when I'm talking to, to Dwayne and we have a, a, a conversation, because me and Dwayne probably talk uh, once every other day. Right. Okay. And so I may say something to him about the script. He'd be like, nah, that ain't it. Or my other partner that's in Atlanta, Dez, and nah, e, that ain't how they go, you know. <laughs> I, and I'm able to 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 be like, oh, okay, well, let me go review that, 
you know, and I, I still have that to this day because I know that I have to have people in my life yeah. that can show me that I'm wrong in the word. And, and as my mentor, Dr. Ron, shout out to Dr. Ron. We 